Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How we doing? Good morning. Today's video is to give you some insight into what it takes to get ready for a weekend of travel baseball when it rains all day and all night. So we're headed to the field right now, headed to a couple of fields right now. It's seven in the morning, it's Sunday morning, and we got a ton of rain in Massachusetts over all day Friday, basically Thursday night, all day Friday. We're still raining Saturday morning. So our games all got canceled on Saturday and now it is Sunday, and we are going to get games in today. So, and I'm fogging up right now. Why is my glasses fogging up so much? So, uh, we've had some games canceled today, um, but our home games, we're doing everything we can to get our fields ready to play um, for our teams today. So, this is part of travel baseball, and it's a really, really important part. And I get asked all the time, and I'll show you guys in a second what we're going to do once we get there. If I can see, because I can't see anything for some reason, I'm fogging. Um, but I get asked a lot about travel baseball and everything that kind of goes into it. And this is a, a really important part of it that sometimes not everybody wants to do. And so if you play on dirt fields, if your home games are on dirt fields, which all of ours are right now, we, we do have a turf field available to us usually, uh, but this year we do not have it. The last two years actually we haven't had it because of uh, everything going on with COVID. So our fields are all dirt. And when you get two days worth of rain, it's gonna take a lot of work to get the fields ready. And so you have two choices. One choice is, I'll oh, just cancel the games. It's gonna take a lot of work to get the, the fields ready, so let's just cancel them and we'll just play next week. Um, and sometimes that's the only option. Sometimes the field is just a mess and there's nothing you could do. You could be a professional ground screw, uh, but you ain't getting that thing ready. But option two is you gotta get up nice and early even if you got a whole day of baseball and you got to rake the field, you got to work on it, you got to get the field ready. That's what we're going to do. So uh, it's my responsibility owning the program that I have to get up there and work on it. So right now I'm going up. Uh, my dad is actually going up as well. Neither of us are playing this morning. I have games later today. So I have a game at 1.30 and then I have another game after that. Probably we'll start around like four o'clock or so. Um, and so I'll be playing from 1.30 on, but I can't just worry about my teams when I own the whole program. So I'm going up now to fix the field, and then uh, my dad's not playing today either, but he, uh, well, I kind of called him last night and said, hey, can you come help me get the fields ready? So I guess he kind of had to say yes, but he's never said no. And so do I wish I was from Southern California and uh, it never rained and it was beautiful every single day? Yeah, but when you live where we live or when you live in most places in the country, this is gonna be part of it. So um, just a little insight for anyone that says, you know, what does it take to own a, a travel baseball program? The coaching and all that stuff is part of it, but the administrative part, the communicating with umpires, the communicating with opposing coaches. So like yesterday, when a game gets canceled, right? And we have 11 teams playing right now. And so I've got to be able to communicate with 11 different coaches, our coaches, the opposing team's coaches, then the umpires. When a game gets canceled or postponed or pushed back, it's my job to communicate with all of those people and let them know what's happening, right? Can we play in our field? So I've got to be able to go out and check our fields and see if they're playable or not. Have to make a decision. Do we play today? Can we not play today? Can we push back to tomorrow? Can the other team push back to tomorrow? You've got to talk to the opposing coaches. Once you come to a decision, you have to let the, the umpires know. What are we doing? Are we playing? Are we not playing? And then you've got to let your family and players know. So all of our families, I've got to email them and let them know throughout the day. What are we planning on doing? Are we going to play? Are we going to play tomorrow? Can we not play at all? And so that's what I spent basically all day yesterday doing. And so for yesterday, again, we canceled everything. But for today, we're playing. Now, some of our games, the, our away games today, they all got canceled. Um, but for our home games, like we're, we're doing everything we can to play. And, uh, and we've got teams coming, they'll be arriving in probably an hour or so. 
and so we'll have an hour to get the fields ready. Uh, we actually have about two hours because even when the teams get there and start getting loose and all that stuff, we'll be able to continue to get the fields ready to go. Like my approach has always been, if there's any chance at all to play the game, we're playing the game. Does anyone remember in Little League, like maybe this was just me, but in Little League, when they canceled the game because of rain, like I cried, like, or at least I wanted to cry, I and mean, probably sometimes I did cry. I can still remember. I can still remember playing the Mets, and I was like pumped up. I was playing against one of my buddies. I wanted to go deep like four times that game. And we were sitting there ready to play, and they canceled the game because the field was too wet. Like I was crying inside. So, you know, players want to play. If we can play the game, and it's going to take just getting there really early and working on the field for an hour or two hours to play, then we're playing. That's my thought. All right, so we're pulling into the field now. Um, show you guys what it looks like. We've got two fields that we got to get ready today. Did you watch the Celtics last night? No. Play the Warriors? Huh? They played the Warriors? Yeah. That guy should be shot. Who? Um, Curry? Yeah, he... <laughs> Swish. 30 feet past the three-point line. He looks over there, throws it. Yeah, Swish. he's the best shooter of all time. He goes into the corner with like 10 seconds left in the game or 15 seconds. They were down by six anyways. Goes into the corner. Edwards is in his face. Nothing but net. I'm going, somebody break his jaw. <laughs> unbelievable. He's the best shooter ever. Then he twists his ankle like you wouldn't believe yeah. and finishes the game. LeBron James twists <laughs> his ankle and it was like uh, he was <laughs> shot. Did you see who the Celtics picked up? Jabari Parker? Yeah. 11 minutes, 9 points. Yeah, he was really good yeah. 20 years ago. <laughs> He's only 26. No, I know. He got injured. Yeah. He looked good. Uh, well, he was top three pick. What number pick was he again? I can't remember. Uh, he was a wait. super high pick. Yeah. Who's playing up there? Twelves. Like who's here already? I don't know. Both teams have already been here. That's what I said when I got here. Both teams have been playing catch is for it, twenty is it minutes. An eight thirty game? No. I'm documenting today what it's like. Part of the responsibility of travel baseball you is you gotta freaking get the fields ready. And make sure you put wish all teams were like this. <laughs> Call them out. Call out the teams. Call them out. Right, this is gonna be the problem. So we're just gonna have to fold. We gotta make sure. So we definitely gotta go this way. What I do is I, I pull all the sides in, in and then, and then it drag it out. Yeah, good idea. Tim said if that's that'll be the only thing you got to make yeah, sure of. The problem is there's a lot of water here. It's going to be heavy to pull all at once. Yeah, everything else is all right. It's a little bit wet, but... Oh, that's nothing. Shit, that's a lot of water. Well... Let's see if we can do it. All right, so now I want to drag straight back here. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> we might need an extra person. This ain't going nowhere. Maybe if I get closer to you. There we go. Nice. Either that, if we get this over, we then just fold it over. See if we can move it a little bit more. Come on. There we go. There we go. Fuck. Jesus. Alright. Now I'm soaked. Now fold it over. That's far enough, you think? Oh, yeah. Nice and dry under here. 
This field's barely wet at all. My socks are wet now. Oh. This one, do you again do the same thing? Pull it this way a little. Gold. 13 gold. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Pull it over here, let it sit here for a minute. This is no ice on. That should be good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that first weekend, I was out there with an ice pick chipping away. Field was a skating rink. Yeah, I drove by yesterday. It was coming by here, so I just thought it didn't look too bad. It's no, it's not like bad. Four o'clock or so, yeah. Not bad. The, uh, Feels just a tiny, tiny bit soft, but Is it? Yeah. I think just a little bit of raking and just let the, once the sun comes up, should be good to go. It's a little soft around here, but not too bad. I think a bag of speed to drive into a little down, but I don't think you have to. Especially if the sun coming up to it. Yeah. Well, the first week that we played at American Legion, it was about 10 times wetter than this, and we didn't have anybody slip. Huh? Uh, grizzlies? I don't know. Do you play anything but uh, the show? Uh, mostly just the show. All right, almost done. About 45 minutes. We gotta go up there and make sure that the other field's ready to go. If you've enjoyed this video and wanna learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills. We break down the exact mechanics that you're gonna to wanna to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you wanna go check it out.